Hi, my name is Joe, and this is Clementine Puppy Paws. Today, the two of us are going to talk about how I like to use Paragon Machine Works tubing blocks so that uh, I can take the main tube of a bicycle and I can hold it rigidly in a milling machine vise and miter the ends of it so that uh, not only do I get a good cut, but also the ends of the tube are in phase with each other. Let's get into it. These are available from Paragon Machine Works out of Richmond, California, and what they are is just uh, 6061 aluminum blocks that have been bored to different fractional inch sizes. These are inch and an eighth, and they make them in a lot of different tube diameters. You can do, you know, five eighths, half inch. They maybe have three eighths. It goes all the way up to probably two, two and a half inch. And, uh, and these are usually in stock, and they ship right away. And so if you have two of them of the same size, you can put them on a tube, like this is an inch and an eighth tube, and I have two of these inch and an eighth blocks. And now uh, you slide them on there. And the beauty of it is that when you clamp these on there, you now have something that you can clamp between the parallel jaw faces of a machine vise. You're going to get a really good hold on it without damaging or uh, crimping or crunching your tubing. And if your jaws of your vise are parallel to the axis of your machine, and if you've trammed in your vise, then now uh, your tube should also be parallel. The center line of your tube should be parallel to the axis of the machine, which is really helpful. Uh, so pretty quickly, you know, you can get it clamped up in here. And then the other beauty of this is that these are indexable on 90 degrees. So 90, 180, 270. And so if, for instance, you like in any bicycle frame, if you want to put your miters in phase with each other, like if this is a top tube and you have a, a C tube and a head tube and they're going to be coming in on the same axis, then you can use these, uh, these blocks. You would just set them both down on a flat surface like this. This is Blanchard ground steel, but you could use uh, a less exact flat reference and it would still work fine. Uh, you could use the machine table of your mill. You could use, uh, you know, even a workbench is usually going to be flat enough, but the flattest surface you have in your shop that's long enough is going to be great. And you just tighten them both on there at the same time, leaving enough room for the whole saw to do the cut. And uh, you just keep them on there. If you need to, you can loosen one at a time, shimmy it partway down the tube, tighten it again, you know, move the other one. And as long as you don't do that too many times, you're probably still going to be pretty close on your, uh, your registration for the phase of things, uh, which you have to do some on a down tube sometimes. And um, so anyway, uh, these just allow you simple work holding for this thin walled tube. And it also allows you to phase the cuts. So we'll put this on here, we'll tighten these up, we'll head over to the mill, and I'll demonstrate some cuts with these. So here we are on the Bridgeport vertical milling machine with my favorite, the Kurt style milling machine vise. You wouldn't need a Kurt, but you need something that uh, has you know, these parallel faces that can get a nice hold on the tubing blocks. So uh, with this in here and with the two ends locked and phased toward each other, you can just set it in here. You want it hanging out of the vise a little bit. And now what makes a Kurt vise really nice for stuff like this is that you can load just the one side of the vise and the, the moving jaw is not going to get totally cocked sideways. Uh, if you're using a drill press vise or uh, some other vices, sometimes that'll happen. And then what happens is it's really only pinching on this part of the tubing block because this jaw is crooked. And then because it's only pinching on that part of the tubing block, it wants to pivot around that. It treats it like a point instead of this uh, nice contact area bearing you know, evenly across here. So you know, these vices are great because you can just kind of grab on the one side and it usually holds it quite rigidly. Uh, if you don't have that, you just need to make sure that you pack the other side of the vise so, uh, so that you get a nice hold on stuff. So I like to put it in there and then I like to use a digital angle gauge like this guy here. I got this for 35 bucks from Harbor Freight and you can buy similar ones from all the different tool supply places and online. And I like to set it in here. And now, uh, you know, you just have to do some, some math or uh, look at bike CAD. I just use bike CAD outputs for this stuff and you set it to whatever degree you need to. And this way you don't need to change the angle of the head. Certainly, one of the valuable features of a bridge port is that the head can be tipped and it can be knotted and all these things. The ram can move in and out. It's a very versatile machine, but I don't like screwing around with that stuff because it takes a while to put it back to 90 degrees. And you really never have to change the head from 90 degrees for almost any setup. 
it's pretty rare that you need to do that if you have uh, other work holding um, sorts of tools to help you get the setups you need. So when you set up the angle that you want, you set that aside, then you got to get on the tube center line, right? So you don't want to be too far this way or this way. That's a Y axis on a machine like this. And so I have an edge finder and uh, well, let me explain. I use Paragon Machine Works hole saw arbors. These have a three quarter inch shank and they just screw on uh, any old hole saw. And I find that whatever hole saw you have is probably gonna work okay, as long as it's not totally dull. Uh, you know, if sometimes it seems like the hole saw is the issue, and it could be if it was worn out enough, but I find that most hole saws work all right if, uh, if only you have a rigid enough setup to make use of it. And that usually, uh, when people are having issues with hole saws and mitering tubes, it's not so much about the saw, it's about the, the rigidity of the entire setup. So knowing that I'm gonna be using three quarter inch shank, and you can see here I have a collection of these uh, with all different sizes ready to go, which is really nice, uh, because they all use a three quarter shank and I have a three quarter collet up in here when I'm doing this work. Then I've modified a regular edge finder so that it works on 3 eighths of an inch also. So I put that up in here. Now I can use the same collet that I would normally use. And I can touch off my tube and get on center line. When I see the edge finder kick off on the side of the tube, I'm gonna zero my digital readout in the Y axis. And a feed across. Now I just touch on the other side of the tube and I hit on my digital readout Y half. And now when I go to zero, I'm on the tube center line and I can lock my table and shut off the spindle. So it's pretty easy if you have a digital readout. If you don't have a digital readout, you just have to use your hand dial with the, uh, the graduations here and you have to count revolutions and it's a little bit more of a pain but you can still do it just about as quickly. So now that we're on the tube center line, I'm just gonna swap out the edge finder for the hole saw. Here we have a 37 millimeter hole saw. This would be pretty common for the head tube for a bike with an inch and an eighth steer tube. I know I'm on my center line of the tube. I I come up to my mark, and I always like to mark the tube before I put these blocks on so I can lay a ruler flat down against here. Uh, it just makes it a little bit easier. So I come up to my mark, and now I'm going to lock the table here in the x-axis. And now the machine should be pretty rigid. I have it at 660 RPM, which seems to be a fine speed for this. So on the gearbox on the side, I have it at 3 thousandths down feed per revolution. So every time the spindle makes a revolution, it's going to move down three thousandths of an inch. That's going to keep this cutting and I don't need to advance it manually. If you had to advance it manually, you'd get the job done, but you would have to apply an even amount of pressure. The beauty of this is that it has a consistent feed rate and uh, it feeds for you. So you can actually get a stop like this and clip it in here so that when it gets to the bottom of the cut, it trips itself and it doesn't machine into your table. So you can start the cut, walk away, grab your next tube. Uh, it's, it's a pretty slick setup. So, turn the spindle on, and then I just engage the power down feed. There it is. It tripped out at just the right time. I actually just clipped this in a random spot, but it happened to be the right depth. And now that it's finished the cut, I pull it up and I have a, I have a nice looking cut here. So if I grab a square, yeah, it looks pretty good there. 
and that was pretty quick and pretty easy to set up. It's at the angle that I need, and uh, it's also uh, centered up nicely, and all I have to do is just deburr the cut, and I can move on to the other end. So if this is a 37 millimeter hole saw for my head tube, I just switch out the hole saw to uh, you know something like 29 millimeter or whatever it is for my seat tube, and I set it up at the appropriate angle, and I make my cut, and uh, you know these things just make your life easy. They're a really good, you know, I have a collection here. This is my Paragon Machine Works block dock. And I have probably, uh, you know, 200 bucks or more invested in these blocks that I bought years and years ago. And I've added a couple over the years. And uh, it's just been really valuable to have these on hand so that I can quickly and easily hold tubes um, and just get the cuts made and finished. I, I also sometimes would use them to hold the tube in the vise while I drilled for water bottle holes. And, uh, you know, they're really useful for that. They're useful for a lot of things. You'll find a lot of times in the shop that just being able to hold fractional inch tubing and round stock, uh, these come in handy all the time. So I would say, um, you know, even if, even if you plan on getting a more sophisticated mitering setup, these are not a bad investment in the frame building shop. And certainly for someone getting started on the cheap, really valuable. You know, I, before I had this milling machine, I had what I bought was a $350 uh, mini milling machine. It's like basically what you can buy from Harbor Freight. I bought that used from someone else and it takes the same R8 collets that a Bridgeport takes. It's a much, much less rigid machine. It has much lower horsepower. It's really not a real milling machine, but I was able to make pretty decent miters on it. And I did that for, I don't know, uh, five or 10 bikes. I used it to miter the main tubes with the same setup. I had a crappier vise and the machine was not as rigid, and yet with this same method, I was able to get pretty good results. And I would just kind of deburr the ends, and they would fit pretty nice against each other with you know less than a fingernails gap, and I could uh, I could make a nice clean weld or brazed joint. And so uh, yeah, I'm definitely a big fan of this, and I suggest y'all give it a try. Thanks for hanging out and watching the video. I enjoy making these. You know, subscribe to the channel, follow me on Instagram, but most of all, make sure that you thank Clementine Puppy Paws for her valuable contributions because she's a real heavy lifter around here.